Married at First Sight Season 17, Episode 6,327. Good Lord, Married at First Sight, put us out of our misery already and fast forward to the reunion. These post-Decision Day episodes are crazy. It's weird watching Chloe and Michael prepare for Decision Day while the rest of the cast is participating in Fight Club. Hi, I'm Tamara, and this is Tamara Lynette Tells. Now, I've got more behind the scenes to share with you. Well, at least according to Claire's family this time. Plus, Lauren has come out of the woodworks and has chimed in as well. But first, let's talk about Decision Day. Michael and Chloe. Right before their Decision Day, Chloe met up with her friend and talked about how devastating it was to hear Michael tell her that he may not be ready to be married. Oh man, I believe that many people sign up for this show thinking it's like a 10 week gig, get their face out there, get some free publicity for their toe waxing business or whatever, then apply for a divorce that will be paid for by the network. Like why not? Fun and easy, no harm, no foul, right? Until it's not and producers wear them down talking about their feelings for 16 hours for a spouse they don't get to pick and not sure they like in any case. Chloe seems so sad leading up to decision day. Meanwhile, Michael was word salading his way through this episode. He basically told his friend that he wasn't sure if their feelings for each other would progress. And I think he was saying that he was nervous about the expectations of what should happen after decision day. I think the idea of moving out of his high rise apartment and moving in with a minimalist who wants to wrangle 500 farm animals while deliberately seeking out five foster teenagers who have been labeled as being problem children scared the bejesus out of him. Now, once they sat on the decision day couch, Michael wearing his Dennis Semenis short set, the experts did their best to sell Michael on the idea of driving off the lot in a new vehicle called Chloe. You're overthinking it. You two are great together. She lets you wear her necklaces. I mean, they were hard selling this marriage. In the end, Chloe said she wants to see if they have more story to tell. So she said yes to staying married. Michael doesn't feel like they have enough of a foundation to build a marriage on, so he said no to staying married. And chow, you would have thought he was matched with Dr. Pepper, because she was boohooing more than Chloe was. Chloe took it like a champ. Michael seemed to have prepared Chloe well enough for a no leading up to that moment. His answer didn't seem to surprise her. Now, Chloe told the confessional cam, that he wasn't ready to give her what she needs in order to stay married. I just wish we got a straight answer out of Michael as to why he pumped the brakes on this relationship. He seemed like he was really into this marriage and they even admit that they got along really great. If it's not her foster farm dreams that got him running scared, maybe either something happened behind the scenes or he just wasn't feeling her that deep or he forgot that he enjoyed being single. In any case, this season is zero for five or zero for six if you count Michael's runaway bride for the number of successful marriages. So then the producers decided to throw this cast back into the lion's den and had them meet up for drinks. This scene was like part two of the pizza party where they all laid into each other except that this time Claire and Cameron weren't there. At this point, the show is not even entertaining because no matter who you believe is telling the truth, everybody seems to be hurting on the inside like becca and austin were so sad to see each other and i believe there were some genuine feelings of at least deep like going on between them now emily said she has no desire to be friends with brennan but brennan wasn't there to hear it he claimed he had to play in a softball game but on after party emily said it was raining that day but nothing productive seems to come out of these group meetings, so I can't say I blame them for not showing up. Now, Lauren and Orion were there, and Lauren was looking seriously sad and annoyed. But it all started out on a positive note, with the girls giving Lauren her flowers for being so positive and sending daily affirmations to the girls and, and pumping them up when they're feeling down. Then Orion said... Uh, just to piggyback on this vibe, Lauren and I have definitely gone through some shiz and it's been seen in various moments, but one thing that is clear, 
that I hold you in high regard. Everyone is lucky to have you. Ciao. Why did he say that? I could just see Lauren's blood getting hotter and hotter. She was about to blow like a chamomile teapot. So he and Lauren exchanged some words. He said he's still trying to wrap his head around Lauren's last text message. And she was like, why? It basically said that I'm checked out and the only reason for us to communicate is if we want to be friends and clearly we don't. The text didn't require a response, but you decided to respond by saying that you wanted to respond. But here we are nine days later and you have yet to reply. Now Orion was all cocky. Oh, counting the days, huh? No, the only reason I was expecting a response is because you said you would. But that's classic Orion, not doing what you say you're going to do. By the way, this is my loose interpretation of what was said. It's not verbatim. But I believe there's a lack of self-awareness when it comes to Orion because I don't think he gets how fake he comes across. The moment that girl laughed in his face during the honeymoon, he was done. Finished. No longer attracted. Closed the door, calling an Uber and ready to go. I think since the show is making them film together, he's pretending to want to be her friend. But if they never had to face each other after decision day, I believe he would have been perfectly fine never seeing Lauren ever again in life. Meanwhile, Becca set it off by saying, y'all husbands just seem too calculated. The women came ready for marriage, but the level of energy wasn't matched by the man. On After Party, she said the men seem to have agreed or made some type of pact that they would not talk about sex. Now, it wasn't clear if she meant not talk about it on camera, off camera, or just not talk about it at all. And it wasn't clear which men she was talking about. I know they were excluding Michael from their comments, but Orion didn't make it far enough into the marriage to have real conversations about sex, even though they did talk about it. Remember he got turned off when Lauren said she had sex a couple of weeks before she was matched with him? Cameron and Claire were a mess from the beginning. Remember how he stormed off the plane and left Claire in the wind at the airport? That was not hot. And not only did they not make it to first base, they didn't even make it to the ballpark. I don't recall ever seeing them walk and hold hands, so they didn't even need to be talking about sex. So that just leaves Austin and Brennan. Now Austin said, I feel personally attacked and tried my best. And Emily chimed in and said, yeah, I feel like all you men's priorities was your reputation. It feels like all the guys decided to cut the process short and didn't give us girls a fair shot. Orion said, speaking for myself, I didn't cut anything short. Um, but you did. <laughs> it's just not what I wanted. And I found that out on day two. Okay, that was a dumb thing to say, because that means you're admitting that you just strung Lauren along like until yesterday. So he said, I came in with good intentions, but I checked out on day two. Ooh, why did he say that? Lauren was hot. She broke down the seven days of their marriage like the 12 days of Christmas. You said you checked out on day two, but on day three, you tell me you're catching feelings. Day four, you're crying in my arms. Day five, you're telling me thank you for your patience with me. On day six, you're saying I didn't have your back. How are you saying that you tried when you were lying to me the whole honeymoon or Ryan? Because if you're checked out on day two, then check out. Leave. Uh, leave. She really laid into him about how he keeps pulling her in and then giving her nothing, basically leaving her hanging like every single time. This moment felt so raw, like something that has been hanging on her mind for a while and she finally got it out of her system. But what I really liked about this moment, besides Lauren finally sticking up for herself, I liked Orion's response. For once, he finally owned his crap and apologized. He issued her a public apology for how he made her feel. Now, thank you, Orion. That's all we needed to hear. Like, stop playing the victim all the dang time. You owned your crap and finally gave this girl the apology she deserved like months ago. I really hope that made Lauren feel better because she feels like good people to me. She made a mistake. She said she was sorry, researched his culture in order to educate herself, walked in the indigenous people March of Dimes, and this man still kept dragging her through the mud. So I hope this squashes things between them and we don't have to hear about it anymore. At this point, I just want to hear that they've moved on from this seven-day blip in their lives. 
But it does suck that the Bonnet Buddies are no more. Bonnet Buddies! Meanwhile, on After Party, Emily criticized Brennan and Cameron for not attending this toxic get together. Now, Keisha was like, but didn't Cam have heart surgery? And Emily was like, yeah, he had surgery or whatever, in air quotes, for surgery. Oh, wait, this would be a good time to read what Claire's family had to say. That will give more context to what Emily's talking about. So I belong to a couple of Married at First Sight Facebook groups. In both of the groups, Claire's family members put a post defending Claire. Now, one family member posted a statement in one and a different person posted the same statement like verbatim in another group. Now, the way I know that they're her family members is because I clicked in their profiles and it was obvious. So here's what they had to say. It's crazy that Claire is getting so much hate from people who have no idea what really happened. Cameron did not even film about half of the episodes with his, as he said, in and out procedure. And they all knew it. Cameron wanted out of the contract immediately. And that is how he got out of filming. And then he and Claire both agreed that they would try to just be nice to each other and get through it. He bailed with his heart things and she filmed without him because she was under contract. He basically ghosted her and wouldn't return her calls or texts during most of the filming. He then resurfaced and goes on After Party, which was filmed six months later, spin things for himself. He was upset with Claire for telling Emily what Brennan asked him about double dating because Emily was her friend and Claire didn't want to see her get hurt. Cameron lied to not look bad. The secrets he said she was holding were mostly his and they both agreed to. She has all the text to prove all of this. Provided that the producers do not edit this part out, it will all come out at the reunion, but they both did what they had to do to navigate an edited reality show. But regardless, some people are so judgmental, mean, and hateful. These cast members really did not know what they signed up for and the producers edit to cause drama and they would receive so much. I probably will now too. Okay, I wouldn't call this well written, but they are saying a lot. Accusing Cameron of using his outpatient heart surgery as an excuse to bail on most of the season. Now there was someone in my comments who said she had the same surgery as Cameron and she basically recovered in a few hours and just couldn't go swimming for two days. Obviously, that's not everyone's experience, but I'm just throwing it out there as context. Also, Lauren hopped in the comments of a post that was not on my page to reply to someone who was also talking crap. She said, and most of y'all don't know what woke means, but get mad at us for knowing therapy talk while simultaneously telling us to go to therapy. Been in therapy five years, by the way. I hope one day we all come together as a nation and use our noodles to understand that reality TV isn't reality driven. Y'all have a blessed day and enjoy the show you're choosing to watch. Last note, leave Claire alone. Folks calling her job, trying to get her fired, sending her nasty messages saying she was responsible for her brother's death. That's mean as shiz for no reason. We are real people just effing trying. I typically be chilling and enjoying my privacy, but I had to get that off my chest since I had a little time before going back to enjoying real life. So Lauren is stressing the fact that this show is not a reflection of what really happened. Plus the fact that people are calling Claire's job based on what they've seen on a reality TV show is wild. Saying she caused her brother's death is just mean for like no reason. So going back to what Emily said on After Party, she was criticizing Brendan and Cameron for not attending that group bar fight. Now Brendan claims he had a softball game, but it was raining that day according to Emily. And Cameron, who was sick in air quotes, he still could have shown up for Claire. Emily, Claire wasn't even there. By the way, if you missed After Party, this clip is on my Instagram. So Emily threw up some air quotes when she was talking about Cameron being sick. Now there's a rumor that he either exaggerated his condition or made it up in order to get out of having to film for most of this season. I've said it a million times. The things that are floating around about what went on behind the scenes of this season are crazy. But back to Emily's statement about Cameron. 
I don't understand why she cared whether or not he's there because it's just more toxins to add to an already toxic environment. And if you're going to hold the guys to a standard, it's only fair to hold the ladies to the same one, which means Claire should have been there too, no matter what. Now, speaking of Claire, I know she's getting the villain edit. Now, what I'll say about that is don't believe everything they edit. Now, y'all know I'm the queen of spilling married at first sight tea, but I have stumbled across some that unfortunately I can't spill. But what I will say in regards to Cameron and Claire, Cam is no victim. Question everything. Imagine, just imagine if he isn't being completely honest. How horrific would that be for Claire? I'm not saying Claire's an angel, but what I am saying is that Cam is no victim. I'll let that marinate. Later when they showed the women taking boudoir photos with Becca as a photographer, while I felt like this was a filler scene, I do like that they all talked about parts of their body that are not their favorite part as well as their most favorite part and that Becca wanted to focus on and celebrate their least favorite part of their body. There's a lot of talk about body positivity going on these days, but there are not often a lot of demonstrations on how to do it. Regardless of what you may think of these women or how much booty they were showing on camera, I think it was a good message and also shines a light on how harsh we can be about our bodies and see things that others don't. Because I would not agree with any of them on what they don't like about their bodies. Emily said her hips, Claire said her saggy boobs, Lauren said her butt, and Becca said her stomach. I don't see it. I think they all look great. But they seem to really enjoy this photo shoot. And it was nice to finally see some cast members smiling, laughing, and having a good time. It's like been too long. Now, another moment that happened on After Party was with Miss Emily. Keisha was trying to get to the bottom of her makeout sesh with the Australian guy. But Keisha had a hard time getting her question out because Emily kept interrupting to say that Brennan was hopping in the DMs of Claire's friend. So I think she's trying to build a case that Brennan was talking about going on double dates and hitting on other women behind the scenes, which may have been true. However, I think Emily shouldn't have brushed over the Australian kiss. Well, at least according to what we were shown she did. I would have preferred if she took a moment to explain the story rather than try to deflect to what Brendan was doing. It sounds like they both were feeling a certain type of way about this marriage. Brennan friend zoned her after the honeymoon and I guess that tossed them into the fun zone of flirting. Given that they never should have been matched to begin with, I'd be lying if I said I was mad at either one of them for stepping out of this made for television marriage. Get your flirt on, have sex with your neighbor, who cares? They should have allowed them to split after the honeymoon anyways. These two felt toxic together and it never looked like they were on track to build a healthy relationship. This show is getting so overproduced to where none of these relationships even feel real anymore. Other than Chloe and Michael's decision day, this episode wasn't really necessary. Throwing these couples in the bar together when they all are still so hurt, sad, and bitter made their world-class matchmaking process look bad. These people were happy before they got on the show and now they're sitting in this bar looking defeated, worn out, and ready to slap the Bacardi out of each other's mouths. Let's just get to the reunion and move on to the next season which will be in Chicago, by the way. Meanwhile, next week is a filler show, a tell-all with a mixture of previous cast members. Child, don't worry, I'll watch it for you if you want to skip it. As usual, I'll give you the cliff notes. In the meantime, uh, that's all I have for now. Thanks for hanging out with me, and I'll see you in my next video!